Hey y'all, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna try to show you how to get the schematics into your map and looking as great as you see them right here. Yeah. Alright, so one of the largest issues faced with getting schematics into your map is the way that schematics and modded blocks interact with one another. For example, one always overrides the other, whether it's the schematic overriding the modded blocks and cutting it out, or it's the modded blocks cutting out the schematic. So this causes floating trees, or even that the schematics don't appear at all, or that they cut into the floor too much. All these different issues, all this bullshit. Now, after months of waiting, World Painter has finally added a way to change this on their website. Basically, all you have to do is you have to make a custom file, add it to the custom materials folder, and in this file you have to have the modded blocks that shouldn't interact, or that should be read by World Painter as air blocks. Shouldn't be too hard, right? So the first thing that I did was write down every single block from Conquest that interacts with schematics. and a half hours later. Bro, like, I was literally the biggest fucking genius of all time for coming up with this shit and fucking typing out 300 fucking lines for every single plant in existence in the CR community until I fucking realized that Articraft had done it literally a month beforehand. What? No, dude! Alright, so y'all can download this beautiful file out of the description. I'll link it there. So what y'all are going to have to do now is you're going to have to open it, notepad++, plus plus, right? Here you see all the different lines, each line is basically one of the conquest blocks that should be read as air, or as an invisible block by a world painter. Um, what you have to do now is, depending on what kind of terrain you want to do, this is, this is going to be a super annoying part, right? You're going to have to add every single layer type that you want to use in your terrain to this thing because as of right now all this this file contains is just all the uh the conquest plants right as you can see i already added some of the ones just to demonstrate here right so what you want to do is you're going to add a new a new line conquest oops there conquest colon uh then whatever block you want to add as a layer um brown gravel layer boom and then you're just going to copy this whole part from up here up to the three commas and paste it in behind that and that's how you add a new layer uh, a new layer to this this file and you'll have to do that with every single layer type that you want to work with <laughs> with every single layer type you want to work with schematics so yeah that's going to be a uh, a struggle but hey if you only want to have i mean to be fair like the main layer type, of course, is grass block layer, you know, for like bushes and trees and blah, blah, blah. If you use like four or five different types of, uh, of layers for your forest, floor, ground cover, or whatever, you can add those as well. It honestly shouldn't have to be too much, but if you're working on a large map that has a hundred different biomes and shit and uses all sorts of different ground covers, this probably will be quite a tedious process. But hey, at least there's a way to do it, you know? Then when you're done, you'll want to click File, Save, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come to World Painter here, right? You're going to want to click on Tools, Open Custom Materials folder, and drag and drop the file, the Conquest underscore Veg CSV file, into this folder. See, I already have it here. Then you can just close this up and now restart World Painter. Alright, so I'm in game now, I have an asset of a tree right here that I want to save as a schematic so that I can import it into World Painter and paste it all over that map, right? The way saving a schematic works, right? What you're going to want to do is you're going to go to the bottom left corner. You want to do double slash, so you're going to need world, uh, world letter for this, right? Double slash, position 1, POS 1. And you're going to go to the top right corner. And do double slash, position 1. Two. Enter. Now we have a box selected around this asset. I'm assuming most of you already know how to do it. I'm just showing this for those who don't know. Now you're just going to want to go close next to it. Double slash. Copy. 
enter, and then slash slash skem save, and then what, whatever you want to name it, like a uh, small beech tree. And now we have this saved and we can get the file into, uh, into World Painter. One more thing you're going to want to check before you save the different trees and assets or whatever you have as schematics is how they relate to the floor, right? So how the tree trunk works with layers. In this case of this tree, of course this isn't a tree, this is just a couple blocks, but in the case of a tree that like ends with a full block, it's quite simple to in World Painter just place it down one, that way it's flush with the floor and it isn't floating or anything like that. With these it's a bit more tricky because if there, if we place them one down, there's going to be a large gap in between here, and we don't want that, right? So what we do is, we before we save it, we're going to get a debug stick, and we're going to select it until it says whoops, down there, uh, with, with our uh, left click, and then we're going to right click it once. That way it goes down, but this down here isn't actually a full block, this is just an extension of the block above, but that way it goes flush with the floor as well and there isn't an air pocket. So yeah, before you save all your schematics, or all your schematics that don't end in a full block, make sure that they work with layers and they're not something weird. It's a bit more tricky when you have trees that uh, that end in like vertical, vertical quarters like this because there's no way for these to be, like these things will never sink down onto layers. So I'd avoid trying to use those. But anything that's centered with a stump at the bottom or with a log, a beach log, like a full a full block at the bottom, those work with layers. It can even be multiple full blocks, right? So you could have a tree that's four wide for all I care or five wide or whatever. These are some big ass trees, but still, this would still work with layers. The other type of schematic that causes issues or at least it used to cause issues is like larger schematics such as rocks that have overhangs that are very close to the floor, but I'll show how to deal with those in a moment as well. To locate where the schematics for that you just saved in game are uh, stored, you're gonna want to go down to the little search function down here, right? You're gonna want to do percent app data percent enter. This will take you straight to the Minecraft the dot Minecraft folder. So you want to double click that, just go to the config folder, click on World Edit, and there should be a folder there called Schematics where all the different schematics are saved. I would recommend taking the schematics you want to use for World Painter and creating a new file on your desktop for them. I have a World Painter Objects folder here where I put all my schematics in. Okay, so I got a fucking piece of terrain right here, right? We got a nice, uh, we got a forest floor layer, and we got some plants covering it as well, just like give it the forest vibes and whatnot. Now, to get our schematics into World Painter onto this terrain, you want to click the little plus icon right underneath the custom layers tab, right? Here you get to choose. We won't choose the ground cover layer because we're not doing layers or plants. You're going to want to choose the custom objects layer for schematic. Click that. Now, and there's a little pop-up tab that comes up. Click the little Lego icon with a plus right up here. First, you have to search for the folder up here. Just click here, find the folder where you save your schematics, whether it's on your desktop or it's in your config or whatever, right? Choose the schematic files that you want to use in your map. For this, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose uh, da, 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 these four, the small trees, this, these future small tree files there. Boom, okay, I got the small trees in now. Here you can see a little pink preview with magenta wool. Uh, the reason it's magenta wool is because conquest blocks won't really register the way the way they look in World Painter, so it's kind of like a placeholder for them. Now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to double click each one of these schematics and change different settings on them to get them to work properly in game. So we're gonna start off, double click it. First thing we're gonna want to change is we're gonna go to the offset, right? You're gonna want to turn the offset to you're gonna want to change the Y axis and you're gonna to to give it plus one. The reason we want to do it plus one is because we don't want it cutting too much into the ground because the bottom layer is of course where the um, uh, the actual layers are. So where the line is, everything underneath the line is full blocks and this first layer here would be the actual layers, right? So, and we don't want it to cut into the actual layers, so we're going to do that. Plus one, you're going to want to do this with every single one of the trees. Click OK. Next thing we're going to want to do is you want to turn off random mirroring. Depending on, the reason we turn off random mirroring is because conquest blocks don't mirror very well and depending on what blocks you actually used in your schematics, you may also want to turn off random rotation. Like for example, if you used um, uh, quarter slab blocks or if you use those half stair blocks, those sometimes can get kind of iffy when it comes to rotation. 
or if you used arches. Arches also, I mean, I wouldn't know why you would want to use arches in a tree or like in a rock or something like that. But arches also get kind of strange when it comes to rotation. So you might want to change to turn that off as well. But I know I didn't use any of those here, so I'm just going to leave it on for the purpose of this video. You don't want to change any of this. This just shows where the where the things will spawn. We want them on solid land, not on air, not on not underwater, not on water, and certainly not on lava. Um, you don't want to change anything about the collision either. We have it on solid blocks. That way, it, it'll collide with like solid blocks. If you have it to any blocks, a lot of the schematics will disappear because they collide with the um, uh, the layers. Then we're gonna to want to change the leaf block. So leaf blocks should not decay make sure to set that because otherwise the moment you spawn in the world and start rendering these trees if you use vanilla leaves they're just going to start disappearing out of thin air so you want to definitely turn on not decay and something else that you can change depending on how many schematics and like why you want to use them is the relative frequency this is how many of the, this, this type of schematic will be in the map like for example if you have it set to 100 percent, you have all four of these in this case set to 100 percent they'll all pop up equally as frequent as the others, right? But if these three are set to 100%, and this one's only set to like, for example, I don't know, 50%, then this one will be half as half as common as the other ones will be. This can be useful, especially when you're using like a lot of variation when it comes to trees, like for example, dead trees and alive trees and fallen over trees and whatnot, right? Because of course you wouldn't want to have as many dead tree trunks as you want to have alive trees, right? So you want to set the dead trees a lot lower than the alive ones. Um, and that is all that we want to change about this little thing here. I want to click OK. And now we just got to do that with all the other ones. All right, so now that I got that, as you can see right now, this forest, you can see the little preview of the forest, very pink, very nice. The thing that we want to change here is the sparseness of the trees. This is how many of the trees are actually going to be on the map and how dense the forest or the schematic layer is actually going to be with the schematics you're using. So the higher you go, the less frequent the schematics are going to get. So if I set it to be one object per 49 blocks, as you can see, the forest gets a lot more sparse than it was before. Whereas if I set it that to, to one object per block, I don't even think that's possible. There, boom. One object per four blocks, as you can see, it's like completely jam-packed full of things. If we're using small trees, I'm going to set it to like, I don't know, 14, 15, yeah, I'll set it to 15. Here you can also change how the brush, the pattern of the brush is going to be when you use it. I'm going to stick to 50-50-0 because I find that works the best. Another one that works quite well is 100-100-0 and 100-2-0. Those are three that I would recommend. These other ones have quite sharp edges, so I don't really like using them that much. Yeah, we're just going to give this brush a name. Trees. I'm giving it a nice color. Let's give it like a nice, I don't know, actually we already used green. Let's give it like a, yeah light an ocean blue and okay and boom our tree thing popped up right here i want to grab a brush to get like a nice organic shape i mean this is absolute dog water but still and now i'm just going to export this map into game okay buddy so as you can see we be spawning in the forest now right and boom our schematics they be in the woods they done had been pasted here. And it looks kind of strange just because we only used four schematics. Normally I'd recommend to have a lot more variation in the ones that you use, but this is a demonstration and it worked, so. One thing you will want to note is, as you can see here, so our trees are all connected to the floor. Here you can see, so the way layers are always iffy when it comes to this type of stuff, they cut into the ground a little bit. It ain't much, it's like by three layers. After four layers, it places on top. So it's never going to be a full, it's never going to be like that deep, but like almost a full block down, you know? Um, but it may be like three or four layers sometimes. One and two layers you don't even notice, to be honest. I mean, like, look at that. Ain't nobody not going to notice that. This is such a minuscule little dip in the floor. Ain't nobody care about that. And honestly, it, honestly like, if you have a, a solid plants layer, this ain't is, but it fills the f***ing purpose, you know? If you have like a plant layer, it covers it up pretty good. And ain't nobody gonna even notice that, yo. Damn, bro, these trees kind of be looking fairy tale vibes, yo. All right, so I'm in World Painter again, right? We got our three rocks that I chose to change. So now we're gonna have to change some stuff about these rocks, right? So like we normally do, we have to turn off the random mirroring, depending on if there's like, I don't know, if you use any like leaf blocks or whatever. I'm not in this case, but I'll just do it anyway because it never hurts. Just turn off leaf decay, right? because anyone need that, right? 
Now, this, this here, when we have to change the offset, this is going to be a little bit strange, and you might have to play around with this thumb some how much you want to change the offset. So here you see this, this the line here is the ground layer, right? But you also have to remember that we're using layers, so I think we just want to do minus one two i'm not sure to be honest you just have to play around with this you might have to export it a couple times see i'm just going to do minus two because that's the overhang right there so that means there's going to be layers like that. actually no, i'm going to do minus one i'm going to try that i'm going to export see what that looks like we might have to go down one more though yeah i was right you do want to put this one further down for the overhang so yeah, another thing that you're definitely going to want to change, you want to change the sparseness of these things, because right now, just look at this, this is way too many rocks, right? Let's put that at 250. Let's say 100. Still too much. Low key, even 150 is probably going to be too much. 150 is still too many rocks. I mean, you don't want rocks being everywhere. They're not even close to be as many rocks as trees. I mean, this is pro low key. Even this is still too much, but we can leave that now because I don't want to have to fly around looking for rocks. Name rocks. Give this a color. Ooh, nice dark purple. All right, so I got my rock thing here. I'm just going to paint this in the same way as I did the other thing. Painted that in, now I'm just going to export and see what it looks like in game. I right, so I'm in game again. As you can see, the rocks have exported. They don't, they clip. Sometimes they clip like a little bit into the layers, but honestly, they turned out pretty good. You definitely want to use more schematics. Like I only use three rocks, that's why you have three of the same one right next to one another here. <laughs> and low key, like they even look, I mean they look really good in the forest as well. I can't even lie. This may be a shitty example, but in general, if you have like bushes and taller trees and fallen stumps and all sorts of stuff lying around, bro, these would fit right in. Yeah, no, this is pretty sexy, I can't even lie. Hey yo, so anyway, I hope y'all like this video, uh, I hope this could at least help some of you, I know this was an ongoing issue trying to get schematics into the map and whatnot. Should be able to do it now, damn, this shot actually is kind of sexy, I can't even lie. Anyway, you should be able to do it now, if you're interested in doing other parts of like terrain making and whatnot, I got some more videos on my channel talking about shaping terrain and plants and biomes and I don't know, stuff like that. Yeah, anyway, if you face any issues, just ask them in the comments i'll try to help you as much as i can i've been doing this terrain stuff for years now so i've faced like almost every issue possible to man you know so anyway i hope you enjoyed all right see you later bye